Hey guys, how you doing? This is Paul and today I'm going to show you how to use Final Cut Pro to change basic unedited shots like these into more vibrant and interesting shots. So I'm definitely not a professional when it comes to color grading, but I feel that I've progressed a lot since I started with video and this is what works for me, so hopefully it might work for you as well. So I start by importing my footage that I want to work with into my timeline and you'll notice that these clips are pretty flat and boring to begin with and that's actually intentional. That's because really the first step in the whole process is getting your settings right on your camera. On my camera, the Canon 80D, I have a customized profile that's on screen now and as you can see I have sharpness and contrast all the way down and saturation and color tone one notch down. And I've messed with these settings for quite some time and what I've found, at least for me, is that I get much better results when I adjust things like sharpness, contrast, saturation, and color in post rather than in camera. So once you've set your camera settings the right way and you've recorded your video and imported it into Final Cut Pro, the first thing you'll want to do is check your white balance. So thankfully Canon has incredible audio white balance in camera so 90% of my shots are good to go but every now and then I get one of those shots that's a little too yellow or a little too blue. Now Final Cut Pro doesn't actually have an easy color temperature slider like Adobe Premiere and other editing softwares have so it's kind of a tedious process to fix your white balance and I don't want to spend a long time talking about it in this video so I'll leave a link in the description down below to a video that explains everything you need to do to fix your white balance. So once you've got all that set you can finally start following along with the process that I go through to edit my videos. So I like to start by immediately going into the effects panel and copying over three effects and those are color correction, contrast, and sharpening. And you'll notice that by default, contrast is set to 100, which is way too high. I normally like to keep it around 8 to 10 for what I'm shooting. Also, the sharpness is automatically set to 2.5, which is actually about perfect for my footage. The Canon 80D only shoots in 1080p, and as I mentioned earlier, I turn the sharpness down all the way in the camera, so I like to add a little bit back in post, but if you already have sharp footage or if your footage is 4K, you could probably be be able to skip this step. So after adjusting only those two settings, we can already see a noticeable difference in the footage. It's starting to look a little bit less flat and we still haven't even started on the color grade. So we'll go back up to color correction one and click this arrow to take us to the color board, which is a very powerful tool in Final Cut Pro that allows you to adjust the color, the saturation, and exposure of your image. So under each one of these tabs, you'll notice that there's four different settings that you can adjust global, shadows, midtones, and highlights. And those refer to the four different parts of the image. So by adjusting global, this affects the entire image. Shadows affect the dark parts of the image. Midtones are for the more neutral areas like skin tones. And highlights are the very bright parts of the image. So I think the exposure and saturation look pretty good already, but I'll go ahead and set the global saturation to about 15%. And now we'll move into the color tab, which is where most of the work will be done. The look I normally go for in most of my videos is a minor version of the orange and teal look, which takes the shadows towards a more bluish tint and the mid-tones towards a more orange color to really make the skin tone stand out. So in Final Cut, it's actually really easy to achieve this look. So all of these sliders are in the middle of this color spectrum here, and moving them up will adjust the image towards the color that it's on, and moving it down will adjust the image towards the opposite of the color that it's on. So the shadows are by default already on a sort of tealish color, so we'll go ahead and move those up to about 15%, and this makes the image look a little weird, but if we take the midtones and set them on the same level as the shadows and go ahead and move those down 15%, it kind of balances it out and gives it the minor version of the orange and teal look that I said I was going for. Now if you want a more emphasized version of this look, obviously you can go ahead and set this to maybe 30 and negative 30, and that kind of emphasizes it, but for my videos I think 15 and negative 15 look fine. 
So once you have this base edit, you can go ahead and press Command C to copy all of the attributes from one video and press Command Shift V to paste them over to another video. And from there, of course, you can go in and edit the footage of the other video however you want. So now I'll go through one more example for you guys. Here I have a clip I took of these plants at this beach during sunset. And I already added the contrast and sharpening. But what I really want from this video is for the colors of the sunset to really pop out and be a little bit more emphasized. Right now, as you can see, it's just a very pale and dull orange. But I'm going to try to really make it pop through the color grading. So I'll start by taking the shadows to 20% and the midtones to the opposite, negative 20%. But you can see that the shadows are still a little too blue and it's not really bringing out the orange of that sunset. So to kind of balance it out, I'll go ahead and move the shadows down a little bit to 15%. And to bring out the orange, I'll take the highlights, move it over to 180 degrees and move it down to negative 20% as well. Now this finally gives the sky that brighter orange that I was looking for, but to even emphasize that a little bit more, we can go to the saturation tab and move the global saturation up to maybe 50%. And as you can see, that finally makes the sky really pop out and look a lot better. Now if we go back and turn off the color correction panel to see what we had before, you can see it just looks so much more dull and uninteresting than the final version. So that's about all I have for this video. Hopefully you found something in here that makes your footage look just a little bit better. And again, there's not just one way to do this. This is how I normally color grade my footage, but I recommend messing around with the settings to see what works best for you and your videos. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for some more content coming soon. Thanks.